Hey guys, so as you guys can see, my eyes are actually completely better now. It was really honestly thanks to you guys. I was skimming through the comments and somebody mentioned that they used my type of solution and my type of contact and together. A lot of people were experiencing problems. I changed my solution, totally fixed it overnight. And so thank you guys. I'm going to write about it more on my blog, which is down below. I'll probably do that blog post though in about two days. I'll announce it on my Twitter. I'm actually going to start up my blog again, but it'll definitely be a delicate balance between not getting you know, too crazy personal and like still respecting privacy of me and my friends while you know still being somewhat intimate, a little bit more intimate than you know YouTube videos are anyways. So yeah, if you guys are curious, I will leave that down in the description box, but don't expect it for another two days or so. But I'm excited because I've actually kind of missed the blog world. But anyways, so I wanted to do a quick haul for you guys. The first thing that I got was this Up and Up Eye Makeup Remover Liquid. Now I usually use the Neutrogena one and quite a few of you guys ask me, you know, how do I take off waterproof eye makeup or I really like liquid last and I can't take it off though. And so anytime you have a waterproof eyeliner, you're just going to have to expect to you have to use a oily eye makeup remover. Um, I know some people use mineral oil, which I'm uh, not so sure about, but some people also use olive oil, which I'm sure is absolutely fine. And I used the Neutrogena eye makeup remover. Before that, I used to use Lancome's by Seal, and I also used Shiseido's eye and lip makeup remover. And both of those are really good, but they're definitely kind of expensive. You know, I remember it was like 20 Eight, almost $30 just for eye makeup remover. So I ended up using the Neutrogena one. I hear the Sonia Kashuk one is really good as well. A few of you guys recommended the Up and Up one because it's like a dollar cheaper than the Neutrogena. I really didn't like this. It burns the skin of my eyes and then it also dries the skin of my eye out. But I mean, generally speaking, any eye makeup remover where you have to shake, usually I like them, but this one I just really didn't like. The only reason why this one is empty right now is because I left it on my floor and then I kicked it over. Which definitely kind of made me sad because I really don't like it. I don't know, it just really dried the skin out on my eyelid. Definitely wasn't worth, you know, the dollar or whatever it is that you see from the Neutrogena one. I think the Neutrogena one, you know, is a really good substitute for the Lancome one, the Shiseido one. Not a dupe, I still think the Lancome one is like this much better. But I still think that one's really good, you know, it takes off all your makeup completely, but this just, I don't know, really messed with the skin of my eyes, so I really didn't like it. It just made the skin of my eye burn really, really badly. It was just a crazy pain. So the next thing I tried was this EOS Lip Balm. So I got this in Sweet Mint. I saw this in, like, the Walmart aisle, whatever, and I was just checking out, and I was like, oh, whoa, they came out with Sweet Mint finally. Because I remember when they first came out, they didn't offer this flavor. So this is what it looks like. I generally only like mint lip balms, and it tastes just like Orbit Sweet Mint Gum, and then it has this little sphere of lip balm. Now, I do think the packaging is a little bit inconvenient, just because, you know, it's really big, so you couldn't throw it into a small clutch, or you couldn't throw it into your back pocket. But then I think the packaging could be really good, too, because, I don't know if you guys like me, but I always lose my chapsticks. I always lose my lip balms and chapsticks and eyeliners and things like that before I actually finish it. So I feel like I'm not going to lose this because it's so big. As far as the protection and coverage, I don't find it to be super healing. I think this is a good lip balm, but only if you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of problems with your lips. You know, if you have really dry lips, or if you live somewhere where there's kind of you know, adverse weather conditions, then I don't think this is going to be a great pick for you because it's not super moisturizing. The Burt's Bees one does last longer, but it's also because it's a little bit waxier and thicker formula. And this does sink into your lips pretty nicely. Not as well as the Shiseido ones or the Kiss Me Soft Sense ones. I think it's a good lip balm and I really like how it tastes, but like I said, if you're somebody, you know, who experiences problems with your lips, then I probably wouldn't get this because it's just not super healing, you know, but if you don't have problems with your lips, then I think it's a fine lip balm, but just, you know, not for someone, like I said, who has trouble lips. Oh, and it's also organic for those of you guys that care about that kind of stuff. The next thing I tried was the Essie Petal Pink nail polish. I'm wearing it right now. I wore it in my last video and quite a few of you guys asked what it was. So if you want to see it next to French Affair, this is what it looks like side by side. Now you can really see the purple lavender in French Affair. And Petal Pink is really just a true baby pink, you know, baby ballerina pink. So I actually received this as a present because as you guys know, I'm actually not an Essie girl. I'm an OPI girl. I love OPI polishes. This one I had to get around three coats and it's still sheer because it's a little bit of a sheer or a lighter color. But that's fine. I mean, that's to be expected with this kind of shade. I mean, honestly, I don't think, though, that I would ever buy Essie polishes for myself. The only Essie polishes I own are ones that are given to me. And that's because I just find the formula so strange. And, you know, I, I feel like you have to put so many coats on. And then after it dries, you know, it looks really good for the first day. And then after two or three days, it actually starts peeling back from my fingernail. It's weird. It just kind of dehydrates on my nail and then it starts peeling off. So I don't, you know, I've never been super crazy about the Essie formula, but... I do like this color, so if you're an Etsy girl, then, you know, you like this kind of pink, then maybe you'll like this, but I, I didn't like this just because of the formula. It's really just bizarre, I don't know, it, it seriously just dehydrates on my nail and it pulls back from the tips, it's kind of weird. 
So the next thing that I tried was Yves Saint Laurent Tarte Resist Foundation. I got it in number 5, which is shade Peach. It's supposed to be for light to medium skin tones. I have to say this is my favorite liquid foundation I've ever tried because I am someone who's very oily and generally speaking oily skin tones are supposed to go for more mineral makeup which I think looks hideous and um, powder makeup just because you know obviously it stays on your face a little bit better but I've always liked liquid foundation because I just think it looks more like skin you know and I've never really liked the whole really made up look and so I really love the finish of this. It's really, really fluid when you pump it out at first. But it's cool though, because once it dries, it kind of dries the satin powdery finish. So it's not a super matte, but it also doesn't have like a moist, dewy finish. It's somewhere in between that's really nice. And the texture is really close to skin. I really like that. But it's not a perfect color match for me. I should mention that to you guys who are trying to base this off me. I'm like an NC20-ish, 25. I've actually never really found a foundation that was a perfect color match for me. You know, it just looked exactly like my skin. And that is because I have a very deep yellow undertone. And with this one, it kind of gives me a little bit of a grayish cast at first. And I've noticed the grayish cast actually, you know, gets better the longer I wear it. You know, after about 20, 30 minutes, it actually goes away and it deepens a little bit looks more like my skin tone but I don't know it's slightly too dark not quite yellow enough but other than that I really like this um it is kind of expensive though and I do think the coverage is a little bit light so if you're someone you know who has troubled skin that I'm not so sure that you would like this but I only do one pump so I'm sure you could build the coverage up but it, you know it is kind of a thin foundation so I just can't imagine people getting a whole lot of coverage out. It's much thinner than Makeup Forever's foundation if you guys want a comparison. But I really like this. Um, the wear is probably the best I've ever tried in any foundation. Maybe I wore it for maybe like 12 hours or so. And it was still on my face. You know, I don't expect foundation to look perfect at that point, but it was still on my face and had it, you know, did this whole nasty slide off look that foundation tends to do on me. So um, big ups to that, but I definitely had to blot and stuff too. People always ask me, you know, oh, I know you have oily skin, and what kind of foundation can I use that's going to stay on my face all day? I really feel like when you have super oily skin like how I do, you just kind of have to understand that nothing's ever going to leave you completely matte. But, you know, this one's definitely the best I've tried off any foundation. You know, Makeup Forever Duo Matte, the powder, I don't find it to be super mattifying, so I think this one's actually better. Oh, but the color selection isn't that great on these either, because remember I tried number two or three, which is the lighter version of the warm undertone, and then I went up a shade two, number six, which is super, super dark, so just don't expect a whole lot of, you know, shades in this either, which I guess is another downfall. So the last thing I tried was this Darkness Lash Glue. I actually got this in a place called Diamond Jamboree. It's in Irvine. It's super Asian area. The food's really good. Usually any place that sells darkness lashes or sells cream makeup, a lot of times they will sell darkness eyelash glue as well. It's around $6. I'm not sure if this is the same stuff that's in the tube that comes with lashes, but it seems like the same stuff just because if you look at the texture, it's really, really thin compared to other eyelash glues. And I got this in the black one, but they also have a clear one. I'm not sure why you would want clear lash glue, but maybe if you're just doing like individual lashes. But I would definitely suggest the dark one if you wear eyeliner. It's very, very, very dark. I love this eyelash glue. I think it's a lot better than Duo Dark Tone, which is what I usually wear. This one really lasts all day. Because I don't know if this happens to other people who are also oily, but my eyelash glue after a while will just turn kind of goopy on my eye, especially in the inner corner where it kind of touches. So it just gets kind of gross, and you know, a lot of times it'll lift on one of the corners. And this one I don't experience any lifting no matter how stiff the lashes are, or no matter how long I wear it. I mean, I'm sure you guys understand what I mean, right? Where it just eats through the glue and then it just gets goopy on your eye. It's just nasty. I can't really think of any way to describe it. So I just wanted to zoom in really quickly on the applicator so you guys can see. It's a brush tip applicator. So as you guys can see, it has a brush tip. So it's a lot like the Dolly Wink Lash Glue, but it's actually better than the Dolly Wink Lash Glue because I hate the Dolly Wink Lash Glue. But I think these kind of tips are so great for lashes because not only do you not apply too much glue, which you know can kind of be bad, but also that way it just gives you a little bit more precise application or if you're you know trying to fix your lashes while you're out, then you don't need to find a toothpick or a pen or whatever it is that you're going to use to get glue on the end of your lash. It gives the perfect amount. My only tip for using this would be don't let it sit for too long. You know how if you use duo lash glue, you have to let it sit. It's a little bit of a thicker formula. You have to wait for it to get tacky. Because this one's so thin, if you let it sit for too long, it's going to not be sticky anymore. So only let it sit maybe for 2-3 seconds and then put it on your eye and just hold it there until it dries. It dries very quickly. Just don't let it sit too long after you brush it on. That would be my only tip for this. But if you guys can get your hands on this, I know not everyone can get their hands on this. Because it is an Asian product, it's not super convenient to buy. I'm sure you could buy it on Amazon or eBay or things like that. But... It's a really great lash glue, much better than Duo Dark Tone, like I said, and much more travel friendly. You know, if you're out and about, your lash lifts, then it'll be super easy to fix. You just, you know, put it directly on there rather than 
trying to, you know, sneak some underneath your eye or trying to put some on a toothpick. It just, it's very convenient. It's a great design. It's just the better version than Dolly Winks. So that's it for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys so much you know, for all your suggestions and comments and all your guys' concern. I know a lot of you guys are very concerned about my sight and my eyeballs, and thank you very much. And I will talk to you guys later and look forward to that post. And my next video will probably be announcing my giveaway winners for the Naked Palettes and Lorac Palettes and things like that. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.